tomato sauce was kind of gross. It was kind of squishy. And I got it all over Maddie. Come on, Maddie. Alrighty, hey guys, what's going on? This is Eric here, and I'm back with a brand new Kid Nation interview. Today I am joined with Madison, uh, commonly referred to as Maddie, from the Red Team. Um, you know, I was just talking about this with Maddie uh, just a second ago. This is actually the first time we're going to hear her speak, which is crazy, considering she's on a reality show for 40 days. But welcome, Maddie. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate having you on, though. I mean... It's great. Yeah. So, um, first question off the bat, how did you get cast onto the show? Um, so it's, it's kind of a weird story. I feel like my, from some of the other kids, um, from what I've heard actually from most of the interviews, I actually didn't know this before, but a lot of them were like scouted for like particular qualities that they had. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, my dad was always a really big fan of Survivor. Okay. And he auditioned for Survival, I think, not auditioned, or, like tried to be on it, I think, several years in a row. And over time, actually got to know one of the producers pretty well. Um, he ended up showing the producer a picture of my sister and I. Um, and he was like, hey, we have you for Survivor, but <laughs> we have this new show that like maybe your kids would be interested in auditioning for. Um, so my sister and I both talked to the producers on the phone, and then we both actually ended up flying out to Dallas um, to do an in-person interview there. Um, after that, I think that was when they decided they didn't want my sister, um, wow. but they asked me to continue on in that. I think she was fine with it. I don't think okay. she wanted to do it anyway. Um, so they asked me to keep going, and then I think the last interview that we had was in Los Angeles. Um, where all of us were kind of at that was. Um, and then, yeah, I got a phone call, I think, just a little time after that. And they're like, hey, we want you to be on the show. And I was like, cool. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's awesome. For one, what age was your sister at the time of the uh, audition process? She was 13, and I okay. was older. Yeah. Okay, that's that's really interesting. And for two, uh, that's actually not like terribly uncommon, because I know Savannah... Uh, her dad was uh, like auditioning for Survivor too, and same with Ma yeah, same with Mallory and Olivia, same same ordeal. It was uh, her dad as their dad. Oh, I totally didn't know that. Well. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know if I if I had to guess, maybe like ten to fifteen percent of kids had that same uh, parents get rejected with the kids coming on. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy I didn't know that okay that makes me feel a little bit better then yeah that. exactly so you know overall I uh thought it you know that, that that's a good uh reason to come on so yeah. yeah um so when it came to you know just going over some of the bigger events that happened in the show uh we don't really get to see your reaction to like uh them killing the chickens um how did you uh feel about that so it <laughs> I really didn't, I didn't really care about, like, killing the chickens. I know that was, like, a big thing that, like, people were upset about all of that. I really didn't care that much. Um, so I was there for, like, a lot of the arguments that happened, but I've always just, I was always kind of just, like, an observer of those things, never really yeah. a participant. Um, I did go cut the chicken's head off, and it's funny because, I actually walked away right after it happened because I thought it was gross. I was just like, yeah. I don't really need to be standing here watching this. It's just kind of gross. Like, I'm just going to walk away. And the cameramen followed me and they were like, are you like objecting to them killing the chickens? Like, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, no, it's just gross. And then they're <laughs> like, and they walk away. I think that kind of sums up like every, like my reaction to any, drama that happens just like they would try to get something out of me and I'd be like I don't know it was just kind of gross I just didn't really yeah that's fair I guess it just wasn't a lot of good tv for them you know no I just like wasn't very dramatic I was pretty laid back about things so they would try to get reactions out of me and they never really got anything good <laughs> oh dang yeah. Um, so on that note, I mean, they would still pull you aside for these, uh, I guess they call them confessionals. 
Um, mm-hmm. Were you given a lot of confessionals with like the producers and stuff, like the same amount as everyone else? Yeah, yeah. I think we all um, did the same amount because after when we would like shower is when they would talk to us. And then other times they would just like take a group of us over to like that other set. Um, and we would have um, like one-on-one interviews, which I, I want to say happened weekly. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I had just the same amount as everyone else. But being the person that I am and like not being super dramatic or involved in like things that were happening. I'm not really surprised that none of mine really made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of them made it just like period. None of them <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, were you bummed like when you went home to like watch the show for like the first time on TV and you just weren't uh, featured at all? Um, I was at the time. Yes, I was. Um, I think I was a little bit like embarrassed as well because like, so when the show came out, my family would all get together and we would like make food and, and watch it all together. And, um, you know, they're doing that because the show is interesting, but mostly because they want to see me doing something. And every single week episodes would come out thing. So I think it was more that I was a little bit embarrassed about that and that, I was a little bit disappointed in myself for not doing more, but saying that's how I felt then. Now as an adult, I'm actually very thankful that I wasn't on it more. Um, I actually had a conversation with Anjay about this um, when Anjay and Kennedy were in Seattle together. I think they told you about that. Yeah. Um, I was one of the people that responded to the, to the picture and I kind of started chatting with Anjay and he basically said like, yeah, it's, it's really not fun having your adolescence cast to the entire world and heard for everyone to see. Because yeah. like the person that you are when you're a kid is so different than who you are as an adult. And mm-hmm. I think I, I probably would be embarrassed now if I <laughs> like had my 11 year old self like heavily documented. For sure. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And you know, I would say that it was kind of misleading about your portrayal at the start because you're actually in the uh, opening intro for the show where you're about to like you're really discouraged or something I'm crying yeah i yeah. actually remember why i was crying too. oh why yeah why are you crying yeah i think that was the only time that i really cried it was the episode where dk wanted to go home oh I was really upset about that. yeah so yeah. when you were um there so what let's pitch the you were in the town hall and you're crying when dk announced that he wanted to leave then Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Actually, um, so there is a website. It's not available anymore, but with, like certain tools, you can find it again. Where like there's like a biography about you on the CBS website, and in there you actually um, consider DK a role model. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Could you go into that a little bit for me? Yeah, I love DK. To this day, he's probably one of the coolest people I've ever met. Um, he was just like funny and like nice to everyone, and just like such an easy person to be around. Like, I I would still say that that stands true. I think he's still a role model to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's great. No, he's awesome. Yeah, he's and great. And on that same note, um, actually the only other pioneer that you mentioned was uh, you thought Mallory would make a good um, council leader at the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, and I was just kind of curious as to why. I At the time, you said she was uh, that's smart. That's funny, at the time. Yeah, at the time you said she was smart, but I was wondering if you had any other insights as to why Mallory in particular would make a good leader. I don't know. Um, that's really interesting that I said that. I I mean, just based on what I remember about her now, I think, like, being one of the youngest kids there, she was, like, a firecracker. I mean, like, I, I think maybe as an older kid she would make a good leader and maybe she is a leader now i actually don't know yeah Um, yeah i don't know why i said that at the time i'm sure (laughs) (laughs) okay that's fair and you know um who were you mainly close with on the show like during its uh runtime um definitely maggie okay Uh, maggie and i hit it off pretty quickly um, she was definitely my best friend on the show. I, she became like an older sister to me, like right away. Um, so I would say Maggie was the closest. Um, I was really close with Jasmine. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there was anybody that I 
really wasn't friends with other than maybe like some of the older kids like Greg and Blaine um and then like the yellow team girls I avoided like the plague yeah um but I think we were all pretty friendly I always really liked Morgan a lot um she was just like a super comforting presence to be around yeah Um, yeah I would say Maggie and Jasmine were probably the closest okay yeah so probably like just you just got along better with like the other girls in the red team yeah okay that's fair um you know speaking of the girls on the red team yeah um emily was on the red team for a good while as well um were you guys really close with her or did you guys have like other problems like what we saw because i know the red guys didn't like her but we weren't sure about the red girls because i mean none of y'all were really seen hardly i actually don't i don't know um the only thing that I remember about Emily is that she talked in her sleep. Really? That's, okay. That's really the only thing I remember because it like genuinely freaked me out several <laughs> nights. I remember there was one night where I think she was having a nightmare and she was saying in her sleep and that like woke me up and I was like, oh my God, what's happening? But it was just like, she was just asleep. I think she actually slept right next to me for a little bit. Yeah, that's the only thing I remember about her. I don't remember her being particularly unpleasant Okay. I also don't remember her being particularly pleasant to be around. Yeah. Here. Okay. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. Um, when it comes to like your districts and stuff, you know, obviously you're pretty close with the red uh, district as a whole. Um, would you have, you know, been okay with switching your districts around? Like, would you have been okay with being in a different district? I mean, I think I probably wouldn't have liked to have been traded. Mm -hmm. Um, just because you, you become so close with like the people that you're bunking with because you spend just the most time with them. Um, I think I probably would have been okay being in the green district, but other than that, like if I got put in the yellow district, I think I would have lost it. Blue district. I honestly don't even remember who was on, was in the blue district. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think I would have been thrilled either way. Okay. Sure. Why were you uh, so adverse to the uh, yellow district? They were just so dramatic. Not the guys, but the girls. And of course, that's who I would have been bunking with. Yeah. Um, I just, I didn't like um, all of the unnecessary drama that I felt like was caused by older guys as well. Um, And I just, like, our personalities just didn't mesh. Um, I know that they came across as, like, really, like, self-centered and kind of bratty and, like, very outspoken yeah and I'm very much the opposite so i just don't think i think it would have been pretty bad if i had been put in there with them okay i mean that's that's fair i mean i can't really say you know me and the yellow squad would have been dope either so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i'm sure that they're lovely people now yeah right right for sure for sure so you know when you and uh, Maggie and Jasmine became like uh, good friends, like what sort of stuff would you guys do in your downtime? Because that's something we really didn't get to see too much. Um, that's a really good question. Honestly, I I don't remember having a ton of downtime. I feel like most of what we did was just like sit around and talk to each other. There's one thing that I remember, this is probably the only time I like vividly remember doing this. Um, We were standing, the the laundry lines were, Uh I don't actually remember what part of town that was in, but we were just standing around there and um, we were just chatting. Maggie was like having like a, like kind of an older sibling chat with me about like boys and stuff like that. And, and I think Jasmine was there too. So I remember just doing little things like that. But as far as like what we actually did, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I've heard from a lot of people there wasn't like a lot of downtime and stuff. So how were the showdowns like for you personally? Um, well, I'm not very competitive. Um, I played a lot of like competitive sports as a kid, but always ended up quitting because I, I just... And not like that kind of person. Yeah. Um, So I definitely, I mean, I had fun, but I think they were more stressful for me because the only thing that I cared about was like not like, and if we lost the showdown because of something I did, like that gave me so much stress. So I was definitely always glad when they were over. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And there were actually a few, I think there were maybe two that I, I wasn't even able to um, participate in. Like, I don't think I was there for the pie one, um, which I've heard was like a favorite. Yeah. Um, I think there was one other one too, but the ones that I was there for, I just remember being just kind of stressed out. <laughs> That's fair. Um, that's interesting, though. I uh, do you know why you weren't like participate? Yeah. Do you know why you weren't participating for some of the challenges? Yeah, um, it was actually I missed some of the challenges, and I missed like the um, the talent show. There were a couple other things too that I, I missed. Um, I've had migraines since I was five, and they're um, mostly at that age. They were mostly triggered by food allergies. Okay, and. Um, because of the situation that we were in, I was eating things that I was allergic to. We would have like breakfast and like sometimes we wouldn't eat enough. So we would supplement our food with candy, which I was allergic to almost all of without really wow. realizing it. Um, I actually missed the, uh, the talent show because before that we had done the bubble gum challenge. Yeah. And I wasn't supposed to have that either. So by the oh. time that was done, I was pretty sick. So. I just missed out on things like that because of, of migraines, but nothing like really serious. That's actually really interesting. I wonder if that's like uh, plays like a role as to like why you weren't really um, featured on the show or anything. It, potentially, yeah, it could have. Yeah, or maybe maybe would have just been a bad look for them too if they like were to pan to you and you got this massive ass headache. Like yeah, I'm just they like, were already in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it probably would not have uh, been a good look for CBS, considering they, they already weren't doing too hot with the whole child safety stuff, from my understanding. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good point, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what what work did you do in Bonanza? Um, I mean, I really did everything. Um, I think just because I wasn't one of the main people that they were focusing on, you never really see me working either. Mm -hmm. um but i remember hauling water a lot um i remember doing dishes a lot cleaning toilets a lot um i don't think that i think that red team did pretty well in, in like most showdowns so i don't think that we were laborers that often um but at least where i could um yeah and i definitely did if we were like like a certain class i definitely did like all of the things that were expected of, of that class. Um, but yeah, it's just never shown. I actually remember the only time that I ever got mad at anyone during the entirety of the show was um, the episode where Taylor and Layla don't want to do dishes. Yeah. And there's just like dishes piling up. I remember I was one of the people at bonk and yelled at them for not doing dishes and just like immediately stormed out. Wow. Um, I don't know if cameras were there for that or not, but I had to have been so angry to actually do that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I tried to be as helpful as I could. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, on that note, yeah. I mean, you seem like a largely unproblematic uh, person uh, during the runtime of the show and you've done a lot of work. Did you ever think that like maybe I deserve a gold star or anything like that? Was that ever like a priority for you? I mean, I think there was, I think there was probably a point where I, I felt like I deserved one while I was there. Um, yeah. But looking back on it, I don't think that I ever really did anything exceptional to deserve a gold star. I was more kind of the person who just like did what, what I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, I never like, had any really good ideas or like made any speeches or anything like that. Um, so I don't, I, I do like, um, at this point in my life that I should have gotten one. Right. Right. That, that's fair. I mean, a lot of people, uh, I, around half the people didn't really get one and I don't even know if they would have wanted you to have one if they didn't have like lines for you. you oh, know? For sure not. Yeah. I think if somebody had recommended me, which I don't think they did, but if somebody had, they probably would have been like, mm, we don't have enough footage for that. <laughs> so, That's fair. Yeah. Um, what was it like with the uh, producers? Like, did you overall get along with them? I honestly don't remember being around the producers that much. I mean, there was one, like, camera crew that I really liked. 
uh-huh. um, that I used to like joke around with. Um, I actually don't remember their names. Um, and then our like PA who would stand or who would stay in our like cabin with us, I always really liked. But as far as the producers, I don't remember interacting with them very much. Just like there for like all of our showdowns and stuff like that. I really did not like Jonathan. I really, really didn't. Really? Um, no. Yeah, they actually got me on camera talking shit about him. Okay. <laughs> Which probably didn't bode well for me anyway. Um, <laughs> but he, I just felt like he was so robotic that it like kind of creeped me out. The way that uh-huh. he would like do lines over and over again. Um, I remember his voice really irritating me as well, which is kind wow. of like a weird thing. Um, yeah, I just, I felt, I think I could tell how like disenchanted was going on and he was just there to deliver lines. So I just really did not like him. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I, I know a few of the kids, um, you know, were not exactly big Jonathan Karsh fans for a lot of those reasons. Like a lot of times he'd, uh, just, you know, ask to redo lines and stuff, or especially during some of the showdowns, going back to the showdowns, you know, he'd be like, 10 minutes left on the showdown, and then, like, a second later, he'd be like, five minutes left on the showdown, just so, like, the TV would have it, but, like, you guys didn't actually know and stuff. Would that yeah. sort of be the same line of thought of, like, anti karsh for you? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I just... I think I just felt like he was really fake and really robotic and, and that just like kind of just turned me off of him. I don't know. Yeah. I, I remember him doing live over and over again and, and definitely we were all irritated by that because we just wanted to like get on with it. Right. Um, but I don't know. Just something about, about him. I just didn't, I just didn't like. Okay. Okay. Um, when it comes to the show, there's actually only one memorable scene that uh, you appear in, uh, at least for me. Um, maybe it's the only time you're actually really featured or, call, or called out by name. You might uh, know what I'm referring to. It's during, uh, you guys are making spaghetti, and you get sauce all over your face and all over your shirt. Um, yeah, so, I mean, for one, like, what what was that like for you, and what was it like, you know, waiting... 12 or 13 episodes for that to be your uh, one moment in the show. I mean, I think kind of like I mentioned before, I was like a little disappointed. Yeah. Um, but also so happy that I was in it at least a little bit. Yeah, it's funny that that scene actually comes up because I remember a few years after the show, I was actually on like Tumblr or something like that. And, yeah. and I, found a a meme of that like me looking down at my shirt and seeing that there's spaghetti sauce all over it but i'm wearing a red shirt so he's like why does this chick care that she's got red spaghetti sauce all over her red shirt like that's so stupid like just keep going with the challenge like why are you stopping to look at that and i thought that was kind of funny because i don't think i really cared that much that my shirt was covered in spaghetti sauce the only clean shirt that i had yeah so i was probably like um (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, it's funny that that's the only thing that ever gets in the show. Right. Uh, one other thing about it, um, I'm having trouble, like, remembering all of it in in perfect detail, but apparently that sauce, like, Jonathan calls it piping hot sauce, and, like, I mean, that stuff got on your face, too, and everything. Was it actually hot during the time of you guys, like, mashing it up and everything? Or is that, does that come in later? Sorry, you froze a little bit, but... Um, I'm going to say no, because I don't remember it, like, hurting yeah. when it hit my face. I, I, I'm i going to say it probably wasn't. That was just added for, like, dramatic effect. Um, really, essentially, what was in the sauce were just tomatoes that we were yeah. smashing, and I don't even think that we ended up using it for anything. Oh, okay. That's kind I think of... that it was just part of the challenge i don't Uh remember actually ever eating what was in there really okay because at the end when you guys have like that picnic with your parents and everything um you guys eat the spaghetti i i thought or was it just like uh catered spaghetti or something i i feel like it came from somewhere else (laughs) um I'm almost positive that it came from somewhere else. I could be remembering wrong, but I I don't think that we ever ate what we made. Because weren't we, like, making pasta, too? 
Yeah, yeah, spaghetti and point. sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I just said like I don't I don't think that we ate that. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> fair. I, it's probably for the best, honestly. It seemed like yeah. more of that's yeah. I don't know. I just wouldn't trust the whole operation. It no, looked kind of dirty. We're dirty. We're touching everything with yeah. bare hands. Like I don't think that they would want us to eat that or like to feed that to our parents. Right. So. Right. I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna go with yeah. I don't think we ate it. <laughs> <laughs> that that's good. I'm I'm glad. Um, I'd be a little bit concerned if you guys did eat it. Um, I don't know if you remember about anything like a cut politics episode. Uh, does that like ring a bell to you? Um, where like they just had you guys in a room to like talk about politics. Uh, does that ring a bell for you at all? None at all. I actually heard you mention that in one of the other kids interviews uh -huh. and I, I don't remember that at all oh okay that's no problem i mean if you had some intel that would have been nice but if not that's totally okay um speaking of like politics and stuff um how did you yeah. feel how okay. did you feel about um <laughs> oh you're good you're good sorry we just have a little bit of like lag between us no sweat that's bad. Yeah. yeah no sweat um, how did you feel about the performance that uh, Mike did as a leader um, in his uh, run as a council leader for the Red District? Um, I don't think that he did a bad job. Um, I definitely was consistently bothered with how short of a fuse he had for Chris as a leader it's really important that you can like stand your ground and take criticism because you're gonna get it no matter what like even if you're doing a good job people are gonna criticize you um so I think that always really bothered me and I didn't really feel like like I could talk to him about things because he would get so worked up yeah about everything um I think if, if he hadn't had that problem, he would have been a great leader because he was extremely smart. He had good ideas. He was kind. Um, but yeah, I think I think the only reason that I didn't like him as a leader was just because of, of that short fuse. Sure, sure. And then, um, you know, afterwards, you and all the other red people uh, vote in Guilin. Um, how do you feel was the... Um, you know, the job that Guyland did as a council member as well? Um, I definitely don't think that I voted for Guyland. Um, Interesting. Do, do but... you know who you might have voted for? I have no idea. I have no idea. But I, I don't, I remember feeling like, well, this doesn't really make sense. Um, when Guyland wanted to run. Uh-huh. Uh, um, so I, I don't think I vote. Um, but as far as the job he did on council, I only remember what is like portrayed in the show, honestly. I don't yeah. remember having any specific feelings about it or anything that like stands out, which I know is kind of a bummer, but I really don't remember. <laughs> right, right. Um, may maybe this might jog your memory a little bit too, because, um, you know, if, if you think you didn't vote for Guylan, another guy that um, we've heard ran but we didn't get to see run was Jared. Um, if you think that maybe you would have voted for Jared over Guylan, um, that could be a possibility as well. I may have. I I really don't know. I'm just pretty sure I didn't vote for Guylan. Okay. Okay. I don't think it sounds like me to have voted for Jared either. I didn't like change, so I think I probably, just knowing myself, probably voted for Mike. Oh, okay. Um, I think it would have been really interesting to see Jared. I wish he had won. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And speaking of Jared, um, were you at all like uh, close to him or anything? I think I was close to him in the sense that we were on the same team, but I uh -huh. think... Personally, I never really had any connections with him. I think the, like one of the main times that I remember even speaking to him was when he was making all those like necklaces uh -huh. burning. He actually showed us how he was doing it with the magnifying glass. 
-hmm. and a bunch of us ended up actually burning our initials into um, either one of the or some kind of prop or something that was around wow. um, because of him. So I remember talking to him for a while about that. Other than that, I don't remember interacting with him that much. I don't, and I, he's another person that like I definitely didn't dislike, but I just I, I don't remember having many conversations with him. Sure, that's really cool that he showed you the magnifying trick, though. Yeah, yeah, I actually still have the the necklace. That's one of the only things that I still have, but the the little burned necklace that he made. Oh, really? So you bought the one that he made with the uh, buffalo nickels? Sorry, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know if I froze. Okay, okay, that's that's you really cool. Buy. Yeah. I <laughs> from him. I thought they were really cool. Yeah, that is um, really cool. And do you remember if he made anything else um, during like his uh, businesses and stuff? Mm, I'm sure he did. I And I, I think he made not only like the necklaces, but a bunch of little other things that he did like the same um, like burning technique with. I don't remember anything specific around doing something, so I'm sure he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of which, you know, with those businesses and everything, you know, uh, Divad was a pretty uh, big competitor to, uh, well, I guess Jared actually emerged as a competitor to Divad. Um, and, you know, she was on the red team yeah. as well. Um, did, were you close at all to Divad, and did you um, buy anything from her businesses? Oh, yeah, I definitely did. Um, she made great potatoes and potatoes are like my favorite thing to eat. So I definitely did. I think I actually learned how to cook oddly enough and I still cook them the same way. Wow. Um, but um, I, I always really liked Devad. Um, I know that she was kind of like a point of controversy um, yeah. within the show, but I never had any problems with her. So if she was doing something like I normally was okay supporting it. Okay. Um, do you, this might be a little bit more of a stretch to remember, but do you ever remember like nominating her for a gold star? Cause I know that's something that she, you know, did encourage people to do and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I totally did. Actually, that's something that I showed up. Um, it showed me voting for her. Um, yeah, I do remember that. And I think honestly, when I did it, I thought that she deserved it. And I know that she was kind of like, like bartering for votes kind of, yeah. but I don't really think that she had to convince me because she was always really nice to me and helpful and and made us potatoes, which was like the greatest thing you could give me <laughs> at that point in time. And probably so, yeah, yeah, I, I do remember voting for her. Yeah. OK, yeah, no, that's really great. Um, were you kind of bummed when like she never got it throughout the show? I'm sure I was. Um, she was my friend and of course I was I was rooting for her obviously if I voted for her um so I'm sure I was but I I think I try not to get too like passionately caught up in who won the gold star because even as a kid I pretty much figured out that it was more of like a popularity contest and and who uh, so I didn't get too caught up with it um but I'm sure I was disappointed right, right. a little bit that, yeah that that's understandable um, speaking of like, you know, the gold star distributions and stuff, um, at one point, you know, uh, in DK's, uh, council, actually, you know, a lot, a lot of, uh, women that I've interviewed, um, you know, in, in regards to DK's council in particular with Greg, Blaine, Michael, and DK, you know, a lot of, um, women have told me that, you know, they weren't super pleased about this all male council. And, you know, especially with some of the more aggressive, bigger guys. I mean, they, they, it was the four oldest guys, and a lot of these were pretty hot-headed guys. Um, you know, yeah. were you at any point kind of like, uh, I'm not really on board with this all-male, uh, very aggressive council that we saw? For sure, yeah. I mean, it wasn't so much um, DK and Michael that I was worried about because I – trusted them both very much, especially DK, like, yeah. um, but I think, and of Greg and Blaine, particularly Greg, I don't feel like I ever had really strong negative feelings about Blaine, but mm -hmm. I just felt like Greg was such a tyrant and I couldn't yeah. for the life of me understand how he got on the council. 
I was like, you know this person pretty well. What do you think is going to happen now that he's on council? It's going to be like his way or nothing. And that's not, that's not a leader. That's, that's like a tyrant, you know? Right, um, right. Yeah, you know, that is really interesting because, um, you know, I was talking about it with Andre when he uh, lost, you know, and he was talking about how he sort of like, you know, almost shit the bed a little bit um, just because he lost favor with everyone at the wrong time. Yeah. And, you know, they, they out of like people for the more rational side, like there's Olivia and Andre, but they, they split them, their own votes. So, um, you know, Greg only needed a few um, to really come in and win. So, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad, too hard for um, Greg to get it in, in the end, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, which is which is a bummer, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it turned out all right. I mean, they definitely caused some drama, but you know, everything turned out fine. Right. Um, do you feel like you yeah. learned any useful skills while you were there? Hmm. I mean, I feel like most of what we did while we were there was just kind of like the chores that I had at home, but just on steroids, you know, just because there were so many of us. Yeah. Um, and like skills, I, I don't, I don't know if I really did. Um, I think I learned how far I could like push myself mm -hmm. um, and how much I could take from like the drama and stuff like that. Um, but as far as like actual skills, I don't, I don't really think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it was only like a 40 day ordeal to begin with. So, you know, it's, it's not like they had everyone butcher a chicken or anything like that, you know, so. I definitely um, get that. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you maybe regret um, doing or not doing while on the show? Um, I definitely, I mean, of course, like I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of glad that I wasn't on the show as much just because that part of my life isn't really documented. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, like if I was alive again i would i would want myself to speak up a little bit more um yeah. and not be so reserved and and maybe just be more involved in what was happening um because i think my dislike for drama probably forced me to just be more of an observer kind of like i mentioned earlier too so i think i i definitely wish that i had been more of a participant in in a lot of things sure um, this is, this one might, you know, challenge your memory a little bit, but do you remember what was your best meal versus your worst meal on the show? Oh gosh. Um, wow, that's tough. The only thing that, didn't somebody make biscuits at one point? Uh, yeah, I want to say that happened more than once. Um. I, I, I want to say maybe it's like even the yellow team that made the biscuits. I could be entirely wrong. Maybe. I feel like I remember liking the biscuits. Okay. Other than that, I have no idea. Um, I definitely, I, I didn't eat the, the chicken. Oh, interesting. Um, because it's still had hair on it, but they, it was still kind of hairy. Yeah. Um, and that I think just grossed me out so much that I didn't even eat it, even though it, it was totally fine. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't remember any of the food that we ate. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, you know, speaking on the chicken, I mean, if you, for the nights you guys ate chicken, I mean, if you get, if you didn't eat chicken, there would be no other food for you to eat, right? Or was that not the case? No, there was always something. Um, I mean, it was always like you eat breakfast food, oddly. So there was always like some kind of potatoes. There were pancakes often. Um, there were sides. We always had some kind of side. I don't remember specifically what. Um, and I may have eaten chicken at some point, but I know that first time I definitely like looked at it and I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't blame you, especially. 
as, as a kid watching the chicken die and then in your bowl. Yeah. Oh, and I was a picky eater too. As a kid, I was just not about, I was not about that, that first time around. Yeah. Right. Right. I was That's... probably severely malnourished also just putting that out there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I, I know a lot of people had a lot of like pretty bad health stuff, you know, occur on the show. Like, uh, Laurel and stuff. I think there's some, Laurel mentioned something about like her lips being like extremely, I don't know if it was chapped, but I want to say it's like a worse condition than just chapped. Oh, yeah. While she was on the show and stuff. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think a lot of us were having problems with like our lips being bleeding. Um, just because I think we were all dehydrated often, or if not the wow. whole time. You know? wow. Yeah. I believe that. Mine were super messed up too. Yeah. That's interesting. Wasn't there um, someone like handing people Gatorades all the time to, to like prevent that issue? If you remember like a PA just walking around town to hand people Gatorades? Maybe. Oh, interesting. I, I mean, maybe they didn't give them to you. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I don't know. They they might have. I particular, particularly remember, but I know just myself, I'm, I'm really bad at remembering to drink water even as an adult. And I know probably as a kid, it was worse. Um, so I don't think that I realized that I was dehydrated the entire time. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, I mean, they probably did. I do remember getting like trail mix from a like PA, um, okay. I was, like really hungry and like maybe missed breakfast or something. So I'm sure they did the Gatorades too. I'm sure I had a couple, sure. but I don't remember. Right. Uh what to you, what was the most memorable uh, experience that you had on the show? Um. There's definitely a couple that I remember um, really fondly. Um, I know that somebody already talked about this. I don't remember who it was, but um, the hike that we took, or really, if you think about it, it was more just like a walk up yeah. the hill. Um, it's, I don't remember what happened, but I just remember being really moved by that experience. Um, and then there was another time where um, DK, Laurel, Maggie, Jasmine, and I um, were writing that song. I think DK mentioned it as well, and it's yeah. one of the songs that's shown in like the credits. Right. Um, I'm not sure if this was the same as that time or if it was another time when it was actually being written. Um, but I remember standing around the piano listening to DK sing, and that was like one of my favorite moments too, and and wholesome. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Some I mean, of my favorites for sure. He he has a voice for sure. I mean, him and Laurel both definitely. Were you much of a singer, or do you just help uh, contribute the lyrics? Um, I'm I'm definitely like a a singer slash musician now. Okay. Um, at the time, I like to think that my voice was probably pretty good, and DK definitely like was nice enough to tell me that it was good. But I honestly don't know. <laughs> if I contributed right. anything to it, um, it was just fun to like sit around and, and sing with them. Yeah, no, definitely. That's all um, really good. So you were uh, pretty close with Laurel as well, or was it mostly just for that um, singing that you guys had? Um, I wouldn't say that I wasn't close to her, but I, I also like she wasn't one of my best friends there. Um, we definitely talked every now and then. Um, yeah, I don't remember being particularly close with her. It was more that just we were around each other so much. Okay, okay. Um, it's interesting that you uh, bring up your, uh, you know, your, your singing now because um, on that same like Kid Nation CBS biography, um, you mentioned how you saw yourself like, it's like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And you're like, oh, yeah, I definitely see myself in, like, movies um, and stuff now. Um, did, did any of that, like, ever come to fruition for you? No, no. Um, I think that that was more of a childhood dream than, like, something that was um, something that I thought was realistic for me. Um, after key acting or anything like that ever again, I had done yeah. a commercial or two beforehand, and then did that, and that was it. And I, I kind of changed. Um, I definitely got more into music when I was like 13 or 14. That's when I started playing the guitar. I had played the violin um, for several years before that, um, and definitely like chose that path for a while, like the oh, I'm gonna be a musician path. 
and then kind of decided I didn't want to do that either. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, it's not with me to, to put that in there though. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> right. Yeah. Some of your uh, responses were uh, pretty funny. I, I'm not sure if you'd exactly agree with them now. I just remember one other one that you wrote was like, yeah, I think kids should be able to like work jobs and stuff or like, um, kids of any age should be able to vote and stuff. I, I don't know your position on these now, but I'd have to imagine they're a little bit different. They definitely are. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that show made me feel like really empowered as a kid. Yeah. You know? But at the same time, I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I knew nothing about politics. So like letting an 11 year old vote, probably a, a terrible idea. Um, and working jobs too. I mean, like, what job would I have even had when I was 11 in the city <laughs> that I grew up in? You know, it's kind of funny. Um, I definitely believe that I felt that way at the time, though, because I, I remember mm -hmm. coming home feeling like, oh, yeah, I can do anything adults can do. Like, try me. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, definitely don't feel that way now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's cool, though. I'm glad it was, like, I feel like uh, part of the purpose of the show was to sort of inspire kids to have that sort of attitude. So I'm glad it uh, worked. At least, at least in your case, for sure. So yeah. That's really cool. Um, is there anyone that you still keep in touch with now from the show? I'm really sad to say this, but no. Um, I definitely, I kept in touch with probably Maggie and DK the longest after the show. Um, and of course, I had like everybody on Facebook and, and we would chat here and there. Um, but I got rid of my Facebook several years ago. Um, I have some of them on Instagram, but we never really talked was, um, Anjay when he was hanging out with Kennedy and that was very brief as well. Um, so sadly, no. Okay. Dang. That is a bummer. But, um, you know, right after the show ended, there were a few like small reunions hosted by like cast members, parents. Uh, would you ever go to any of those? I always wanted to. Um, but I think the challenge for me um, when I was that age is that, um, my family wasn't particularly as well off as so, like everybody flying to Disney world and, and flying to do this. And it wasn't really something that was feasible for us at the time. Um, so I was never able to go, but I definitely would have had I been able to for sure. If they had done something like small or like I could have driven there, I definitely would have been there, but, but oh, okay. doing stuff like that, definitely I wasn't able to at the time. Right, because I know a lot of those reunions were like in the Florida sort of area, mm -hmm. at least. So yeah, it would have been a pretty big uh, flight for you, right? Yeah, a little far, a little far for me. Yeah, that's that's completely fair then. Yeah. So, you know, we're uh, actually uh, wrapping up this interview. Um, so, you know, what have you been up to now, Maddie, you know, now that you're not uh, an actor as you uh, <laughs> predicted? Um, I have been an optician for four years. Um, so I deal with like glasses and things like that. Um, that's been kind of like my main gig for a while. Um, I'm planning on going there, um, and then I'm planning on going to optometry school after that. Wow. Um, uh, other than that, I'm really up to nothing. That's, I mostly just work. Of course there's a pandemic right now. So what else can you do? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. I mean, you, I, I can see a guitar and a piano in the background, so you probably get in some good use of those as well. I do, but I, I don't like perform or anything. I mostly just um, like send videos to my family. Um, it's more okay. like a thing that I do for me and like downtime. Um, there, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's still cool though. I mean, props to you for uh, picking those up. Those I, I know some piano myself, and I'm pretty awful, so <laughs> big props to you for uh, playing all that stuff. Oh, I'm not great at it. <laughs> I can figure out chords, and I okay. can do, like, maybe, like, a verse of a song, and then uh -huh. pick it up. So um, it just takes a lot of practice. You'll get Sure, <laughs> sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, Maddie, it's been a absolute pleasure to um, have you on, um, you know, Hope, hope the optometry stuff keeps going well for you and everything and the instruments and everything. I mean, sounds like you got a lot of good stuff heading your way, you know. And you might be a lot happier doing this than acting could ever give you. Who knows? 
Who knows? I think so. I think so, yeah. But thank you so much. I yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll we'll be in touch. You know, I'll definitely send you the link when it's out for our interview. And, you know, again, I appreciate it again a lot. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, of course. It was so nice. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Have a good rest of your day, Maddie. See you later. Thanks. You too. Yep. Bye. Bye.